Niggas in the point ain't changed. It's in the point ain't changed. Yeah, let me second here. You are now tuned into the network. Bruh. <laughs> the YouTube channel that takes complex networking topics, dumbs it down to a more simple language. He also doesn't have his webcam on, but there I am right there. I hope you guys are joined to the Discord server. If not, I will put a link invite in the chat there. Then you would have known. Yeah, excuse me, I was going down the I'm going down the steps and I was like, shit, I gotta go get something. Go down, come right back. I couldn't find my lab everyday shirt, so I got my little Meraki shirt on for y'all. But that's what I was looking for. And a race down, a race come come race back up. Uh, what was I gonna put in here? The invite to the Discord server. But anyway, today we're gonna do, as you can see right here, this um, lab right here. Configuring IPv4 and IPv6 static routes. Yes, more static routes. Like I said in the group chat, we don't do this until our face turn blue. Uh, this is the local area. This is the uh, corporate network we're going to be working with right here. We just got two PCs. They ain't pretty much, it looks more like a small office as opposed to a corporate network, right? Uh, they are, they're in two separate local area networks. This guy is in local area network number one. Those are the network, uh, network addresses for that. And then for this local area network, those are the respective uh, network addresses for that local area network. Then we got the pretty much the wide area network here, which will simulate the internet. And then between the, the local area network and the internet is the the server that they need, they must get to, right? We're gonna pretty much create default routes, static routes. We're gonna create like a primary route to, the, to it. And then there's a, gonna be a backup route to the customer server. Um, I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes for some people to tune in and stuff like that. Uh, we got Anders Tech 79 in the building. What to do to everyone? Peace to y'all. We got Dave W in the building. Y'all be y'all be right in the front of class, man. Uh, Dave W's early today, though. Last time, I guess he was. You must have got out of work late or something. Or, uh, I know sometimes I'll be streaming sometimes kind of late. I know I let you guys know on the Discord server, but I was able to knock some things out and say, let me go ahead and try to stream at nine. This was my typical streaming time. Join, and I uh, hope you guys. Uh, downloaded this live so y'all can do it along with me. Join. Here. I should have done this at the beginning of the stream, I guess, while the, while the, uh, intro music was playing, but I was doing some push-ups and stuff, so. Anyway, uh, we'll give it a couple more minutes for some people to tune in. Uh, while we do that, uh, so I was talking with my boss today. And, uh, you know, he was asking me about, you know, some of the projects that I got going on. Well, where are we at with that? You know how they, how they be checking in with you and stuff, right? And then after that, he started talking to me about uh, Quick Protocol. Quick Protocol. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it, but first he said, I mean, I'm going to read, read this to you. I was like, man, I, I can't wait to tell you all this, man. I'm, I'm a damn nerd. But anyway, he's like, uh, he's like, hey, have you ever heard, have you ever heard of the, uh, the new protocol called Quick? And I'm like, why does this sound like a, uh, why does this sound like a punchline to a joke or something, or to a punchline to something, or like a punchline setup? And he's like, what? And I'm like, you know, like it sounds like you're about to set up some sort of internet joke or something. And he's like, no, no, I'm serious. It's called Quick. So it's a new protocol called Quick, and it's, um, it's basically like it uses, uh, some functionalities of of TCP and also UDP, right? So it's it's reliable, like. TCP, but it's also like faster and it has encryption like T and TLS and stuff like that. So it has pretty much the best of both worlds with of uh, like the best, um, I'd say the uh, the best features of UDP and TCP and it's called Quick. It's, it's It was designed by Google. So I'm like, are you serious, man? Then he's like, yeah, man, it, has, it uses RFC 9000. I'm like, oh man, this motherfucker, now nah, nah, you're joking with me, man. <laughs> um, so he's like, so he, so he sends me an article, and he was really, he was dead serious. I'm thinking nine thousand. I was thinking, it's over nine thousand. That was what I was thinking when he said that. So I was like, this dude is trolling me, man. But no, for sure enough, there is one. It's called uh, the Quick Protocol, which is Q U I C. It don't, it don't really mean to stand for anything. I don't think Quick is designed, defined as the by the Internet Engineering Task Force, is an encrypted connection-oriented protocol that operates at transport layer four 
or transport layer or layer four in the OSI model, you know, just like TCP and UDP does, while only formally adopted as a standard by the IETF in May 2021. So pretty much last year they made it, you know, uh, pretty much public. Its roots date back nearly a decade. So it's been out that long. I never heard about it. In 2012, the engineers at Google originally developed a quick UDP. Oh, it does stand for something. It's quick UDP internet connections protocol. So it's basically a quicker version of UDP, but also has the great feature, you know, the T, you know how to, I did a whole video on this. Y'all can look at my playlist, the CCP playlist, where I talk about the differences between TCP and UDP and, um, you know, how both of them have pros and cons to it, right? Well, the quick protocol basically takes the pros to, to TCP and the pros to UDP, combine them together. And this is what the engineers at Google did, uh, you know, pretty much created. I never heard about it until, until recently, until he told me about it. But um, I guess if you're really deep into this stuff and you're a real, you know, OSI model nerd or whatever, you know about these protocols, then, yeah, you probably heard about this because it's been out since like 2012. Uh, the quick UDP Internet Connections Protocol as an experiment to improve the performance of Google's web applications. While quick was originally an acronym, the original standard in RFC 9000. It's over 9000. That's why I thought he was fucking with me. Describes quick as a name, not an acronym. Personally, I think quick UDP internet connections is helpful for immediate context. So I guess it's up for debate on whether it's an acronym for that or not. But I have to remind myself that the name is, in fact, just quick, Q-U-I-C. In one word, the motivation behind the development of quick is speed. So like I said, it, you know, TCP got the what's called a three-way handshake, right? You got SYN, SYNAC, and then ACT, right? So it's UDP just sends the traffic, right, without any kind of acknowledgement. It just sends the traffic, right? They're not worried about speed. They're just worried about... Uh, making the traffic get there right um but it's just like udp with that but it also has that it also has like the uh um retransmission and kind of like the three-way three-way handshake with quick so like i said it takes pretty much the best of both worlds and then uh and can com combines them into one in contrast to https leveraging tls which is built upon uh, built on top of the TCP protocol. Quick is built on top of UDP. This comes with one clear advantage. The time the time to the first valuable communications uh, drops significantly. So basically, it's just a faster version of UDP uh, and and also takes some of the great features of TCP. I'll give you a link to this article. I'm not going to read the whole thing to y'all if y'all want to. But yeah, like I said, I never heard of it until, until recently. And the funny, funny, th funny thing about it is um, my boss was doing some he does a lot of work with the with the AWS uh, infrastructure at our network or whatever, and I guess he was uh, examining the traffic, and he was wondering why the hell we got all this uh, quick um, uh, quick protocol traffic. So he starts investigating and he starts looking it up, and he's like, "Oh, this is like a protocol that was designed by Google, and it's been out for a while, and it's just a faster version of TCP and UDP." And uh, yeah, it was pretty cool, man. Uh, and his tech said, "Ready to go over nine thousand? Yeah, right." It's over <laughs> yeah, that's all I could think of when he said that, man. But yeah, apparently RFC nine thousand, the nine thousand is the uh, is the RFC number for it. So I'll give you a link to the article below in the chat over there if y'all want to. But uh, there it is, right there. Uh, in case y'all want to know about it, I think that's pretty much uh, it for everybody else. Y'all know I like to kind of talk about the current events in uh, in today's IT industry, and that was something new for me today. Anyway, uh, let's examine this network real quick. Again, this was the corporate network right here. We got the wide area network uh, designed in a triangle right over here. And then we have the customer server that these guys need to get to over here. Right there on the uh, on the right hand side, right? If y'all want me to zoom out, I can do that. But then it starts to look a little bit smaller. So that's why I like to kind of zoom in for y'all. Anyway, uh, we'll go ahead and get started i hope you guys downloaded this lab too if not go ahead and go to the discord server download this so y'all can do this along with us right first step here uh we got the addressing guide right over here so we'll reference this uh for quite a you know for any kind of ip addressing we could also go into the router and get the information we need and let me keep that on top so that way it keeps stop going away right here there is it right there Bloop. there it is right there uh, so we're going to be configuring IPv4 and IPv6 static routes. We, we talked about what a static router is, right? We've been doing this pretty much the past two weeks. And there's also floating static routes, which is basically a backup static route. It's the same thing as a static route, except you're manipulating the uh, administrative distance. So that way, if the primary route goes down, then you have a backup one that'll, that'll uh, 
that'll pretty much take over. And then we could, we're gonna do that in both IPv4 and IPv6. In this background, we're gonna create uh, basically what I'm just saying right now. So part one, we're gonna create a, an IPv4 static route on edge router, which is this guy right over here. And I'll scoot over some so y'all can see. Right? Y'all let me know if y'all can see or if anything's blocking it or whatever. Uh, configure a directly connected static route or directly connected IPv4 default static route. This primary default route should be through ISP1. So basically, uh, y'all see this is ISP1 this ISP2 and this is the edge router. They want us to create a static route that's pointing towards that right there, the ISP number one, right? So let's let's call that one Comcast if you want to, right? And then all the traffic that comes in here, we're gonna send our default, our, pat, our traffic that way, right? But remember they said a default route. So a, a default route is essentially a static route, except we're just saying all of the traffic that we don't know what the hell to do with it, send it to the default route, right? So we'll go to the edge router and do that, right? And we know we already know that it's what? The quad zero route is what I like to call it. So we'll go to enable mode, go to global config mode, and then we'll say IP route. Let me go in there. Now we, we're gonna be doing this until I sleep, right? Uh, don't worry, probably next week or maybe in the next couple of days, we'll stop doing static routes and we'll move on to something like, uh, I don't know, yeah, DRP or something. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, so we're saying uh, any traffic that matches this, we'll just put all zeros, right? We don't care what, we don't care what the subnet mask is, like that. Take the next hop of ISP1. So any traffic that comes in ingress that way, we don't know what the hell to do with it. Send it that way. That's what we're saying, ISP1. But we need to know what that next hop is. It sits in the 10.10.10.0 network, but what is that? We'll see ISP1. It's the serial interface. Now we can go in there and check, but we also have an address and guide to let us cheat over here, right? Bruh. <laughs> uh, ISP number one, and it's the serial interface. That interface is what? Triple 10.1, right? So that is the next hop for that guy. Uh, we'll press paste right here. And a beautiful thing about Packet Tracer, just like Boson Nets, and we have a little grading feature right there. We'll, when we're done, we'll just click check results and we'll see where we're at. Right now, we got 0%. We we'll press enter, bloop, and we got 6%. So, we, when we get to 100%, then obviously we'll be done with the stream. I don't think we're going to do any more uh, labs tonight. We'll just do this one. So, hopefully, y'all downloaded it and y'all doing it along with me, right? So, that was the first task, right? Next task was what? Uh, Configure an IPv4 floating static route, default route. So on edge router, configure a directly connected floating static route. The default route should be through ISP2 and should have an administrative distance of five, right? So what's the administrative distance of this default route, right? We could see, uh, like I said before, we do a show IP route. We'll see where's our def default route. It is right over here. There's the default route, right? The S stands for uh, static. The asterisk stands for uh, candidate default and then this is pretty much the default route right the administrative distance for that is one right the d the uh floating static route is going to have an ad of five remember the higher the administrative distance the worse it is it's any number between one to 255 right when this when basically what we're going to do with that is when this link dies we're going to send our backup routes i mean backup track we're going to send uh this our traffic this way which is isp number two so this is Comcast, this is what, Spectrum, right? So if this link goes down, we'll send our traffic that way because it has a higher administrative distance. How do we do that? Same thing, but we're gonna add administrative distance. Uh, IP routes, uh, quad zero route, oops. You <clears throat> stupid. I'm gonna click my ad over there. Triple zero, or uh, quad zero, and then quad zero again. And it will say, take the next hop of ISP2, which is this way. And it sits in the 10.10.10.4 network. But what's that ISP2 interface right over there? Let's go in there and check. Oh, we can't even check. See? So we have to refer to the addressing guide. That one is locked, right? Uh, ISP2. Uh, it is the serial interface. How can I tell? Because this is the red line that's a lightning bolt. And this lets us know this is the gigabit interface just by looking at it. We could have went in there and checked. But it's locked. Or we could have just went over here and did the CDP neighbors to see who that neighbor is, right? In this case, it is... Triple ten dot five is the next hop, right? So we go over here, triple ten dot five, and then if I question mark, I'll show y'all. Oh crap! Let me see. Let me do that. Let me write it out. <laughs> ten 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 dot five. Question mark. Now we have to put in administrative distance. Any number between one to two fifty five. The higher it is, the worse it is, right? They said just put five because the original route, his administrative distance is one, right? This route that takes us this way. So that's the best route. It's one. This one's not going to show up in the in the routing table that we're creating right now until this one's dead, right? So we'll send out that proverbial uh, gopher to chew up the fiber cable and then 
and then hopefully this link will show up, right? You press enter. Now we're at 12% complete, right? So we're almost, well, I ain't gonna say we're almost done, but we we 12%, all right? Uh, we look at our round table again, show IP route. We'll see our best way to get to the wide area network still is the default route, which is this way. Remember, this one ain't gonna show up until that one is dead. If y'all want me to shut it down and show y'all, I'll go ahead and show y'all. Well, let's shut down the interface. What is that? Serial, what is that interface? Serial triple zero. Yeah, so let's shut down serial triple zero and look at our audit, right? So interface serial. They ain't ask us to do this, but I'm just showing for anybody to, to know, see what happens with a floating static route. How, and just demonstrate, right? Shut that down, right? And now we do a show IP route and take a look at the router table. And it says, that is now your best route. Any administrator for distance for that is five. Why is that? Because this one that was up here is dead, right? We uh we had our uh we had our crazy ex girlfriend come over there and chop up our chop chop up the cables that work at the data center at our job, right? It's like, yo, who was that lady that chopped that chopped it up? Oh, pff, I don't know who she is, man. I didn't mean to that one. Uh, so now we uh let's bring that back up first of all. Bring that ass back, right? Uh, the next thing, the next step was. Uh, so yeah, this default route should be through ISP2. We did that, right? So in this part of the activity, we'll, con we'll configure IPv6. And <clears throat> no, God! I hate IPv6 because first of all, they have yet to really implement it fully uh, throughout, you know, throughout the world. And on top of that, it's these long ass numbers. So you're, it's more prone to human error, right? But uh, we don't have, we have, we still got to learn this shit, right? Uh, on edge router, same guy. We're going back to this guy over here. Uh, configure a next hop static default route, right? Same thing, but we're doing it with IPv6 and it should be through router one. So now we're sending our private primary route this way again, we're sending another one, but it's gonna be for IPv6, for IPv6 traffic, right? Y'all know what IPv6 is, right? It's supposed to be the wave of the future. Uh, so we're gonna say uh, IPv, and how we do that, it's IPv6 route. And then what is the, uh, we're saying the default route, and I had to remember this one. I had to go back in the memory bank because I forgot how to do a default route in uh, IPv6. It's actually colon colon uh, slash zero. That is how you write a default route, right? And we're saying for any traffic, this is, it's, it's, it's a, it's a uh, how do I say? It's equivalent to this right here, but for IPv6. That right there, but for IPv6, right? So we say IPv6 route quad zero. Take the next hop of what? this right over here IP, ip1 that's the next hop but his ip address that's the network address right there we need the exact ip address of that isp1 so let's look in the addressing guide and see isp1's 000 interface it is this right over here i don't think i need that subnet mask we'll see though i don't think so paste that bad boy press enter no i don't think you need that let me get let me get rid of that there it is right there and now we're at 18 percent complete right so uh that is the IPv6 primary uh, default route. Next step was, you guessed it, a floating static route. Where is it? Right there. One eternity later. <laughs> All these damn steps we got to do here. Y'all with me so far, man? I hope y'all still with me, man. And I hope y'all downloaded this lab too uh, and doing it along with me. Let me do this shit by myself. <laughs> Uh, we did this part right here. The, f no, we did this part right here. We did this primary static route. Now we got to do the floating static route for IPv6. So basically the backup route with an administrative distance of five. So same thing we did with the, uh, with the IPv4 routes, but now we're doing it for IPv6, right? Uh, he's saying IPv6. So same thing. So IPv6 route, uh, another default route, same thing, colon, colon, slash zero. And I always be forgetting this every now and then when I stop studying for, uh, IPv6 stuff. I forget what the default route is. I need to remember that. Colon colon, two asses. I guess slash zero. I, I don't know an easier way to remember it. So what's the next hop? The next hop need to be. This is the primary one. So the next hop. So this is the backup route. Next hop need to be over there. So that's the network address. What is the primary? What is the uh, the IP address of that interface? That's the next hop, which is IP the ISP2's serial interface, which is that right over here. Bloop. That is the next hop right there. Bloop. Copy that bad boy. And then say, this is your next hop. 
But they also said the prime, the uh, administrative distance need to be five, right? That's gonna be the backup route. Press enter. We're at 25% complete, so we're a quarter of the way there. Uh, let's take a look at our routing table. It's show IPv6 route as opposed to show IP route, right? And now we can see our IPv6 route and then uh, routes rather. And then there is our default route. Now the back of one, the back of one is not gonna show up until what? Until our ex-girlfriend comes over there and, and chops up that uh, fiber cable at the data center. It's like, yo, why does that lady keep coming back? And I, yo, I have no idea who she is. We got to call the cops, man. I, it's, it's crazy, man. To, uh, now, the next thing is, uh, what else they wanted us to do here? We did the, sorry, you typed super fast. Oh, my bad. Let me slow it down for y'all there, man. Slow it down. I just dissed you. My fault. Uh, do I have another one? No, I ain't got one for that. Yeah, I, uh. <laughs> I I um what was I gonna say? I think I was copying and pasting too though, man. My fault, man. I'll slow it down, my fault. Uh the next thing is to do so we did the floating static route in IPv6, then we did the backup route in IPv6. Now they want us to in this part of the lab, we're configure uh floating static routes from the ISP routers to the internal lands, right? So what do you say? Now so we created static routes going this way, right? Remember what I said about static routes? which is why it's not really used very often. And they even said it at the beginning of lab right over here. Uh, where they said it at? Uh, right here. This approach may not reflect networking best practices. Again, too much administrative labor to, labor to get this done. If our girl ex-girlfriend comes over there and chops up the uh, fiber cable over there, now we gotta make sure that that static route comes in and then do it uh, it's got it's it's too much too much uh administrative labor for the for the network engineer when we could have had a, a routing protocol to do this automatically for us so that's why this is not the best best approach uh but it's good to learn and it helps to learn about networks and how the next hop works and etc et right uh so you said good uh all right sorry about that man i'll try to slow down the uh well, where was we at so now we gotta so now we gotta create some static routes going the other way back right we got to make static routes the other way back. So we got routes going this way and that way. Now we need static routes to go this way and that way, right? So that way when the server sends his traffic, he might have a primary route going this way and then he might have a backup route going this way, which I think they're going to have us do anyway, right? Just by the look of this. Uh, does anybody? No, not right now. <laughs> uh, configure a, uh, what he said? Uh, on ISP1, we're going this router right here. Configure a next hop IPv6 static route to the local area network number one through the edge router. So basically they want us to create a static route going this way to the edge router to local area network number one. Here's local area net network number one and there's local area network number two. So be cognizant of that right here, right? You scroll over some, we'll see the addressing guide for those local area networks, right? There's this one for local area network number one and there's the respective one for local area network number two. So uh we'll go to isp number one we'll create a did they say ipv4 yes so we're right over here we need to do that ipv4 route so local air network number one right so we're gonna go to global config mode we're gonna say ip route this is static route right for ipv4 to get to the network of 192.168.10.16 slash 28 so 192.168.10.16 one uh my bad 10.16 10.16 slash 28 let me widen this up for y'all to see uh slash 28 which is 255.255.255.228 uh, right i mean slash 28 is a 240 right yeah slash 20 is dot 240 that's the take the next hop of so what's the next hop for isp1 Bloop, that should be his next hop, which is triple ten dot. I believe it's right in there in that pop up right there. Y'all see it? Triple ten dot two. That is his his next hop. So now the primary traffic, if we send traffic from the server, it's probably gonna go this way, and that's the next hop from ISP number one, right? So next hop will be ten dot ten dot ten dot. What he said dot two. Let me triple check that. <laughs> triple check. Triple check that. Triple ten dot two, yep. Uh huh. Yes, 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, you damn yes, windows, sir. man. Press enter. Yes, sir. Right. And now we are at bloop. 31% complete. So that's good. Uh, no, you be there. They will provide you a report. All right, cool, cool, cool. Man, got some good things in the work, man. The Lord has been blessing me, man. Anyway, uh, the next thing says on ISP1, configure a next hop to local area network number two through edge router. So now we need a, a route to this network over here from ISP number one. Right? Oh, see right, see right there? ISP number one, configure next hop static route to the local area network number two. So now we need a traffic. Now we need our traffic to go to ISP one going this way as the next hop to local area network number two. Right? What's that network? It's right there, 182, 11.32 network. Right? So pretty much the same thing. We're gonna say IP routes 192.168. What's that network? 11.32 network. So 11.32. Oh, let me, let me slow down. My fault. Oh, and this tag over there. Uh, subnet mask of slash 27. So 255.255.255. Slash 27, which I believe is two. It's pretty much 240 minus 16, right? Minus three, minus six. 224 is the last octet right over there. And the next hop is pretty much the same thing. To make it to local area network number two. To make it to this network over here from ISP1. He got to go this way anyway, same hop. It's just that this time it's to another network, right? So 10.10.10.2. Now we are at how much percent complete? 37% complete. We almost there, y'all. We almost there, y'all. Uh, he probably like, nah, hell no, nah, we ain't, man. 37%. Uh, what's the next task? Y'all with me so far? Anybody got any questions? Let me know, man. Let me know. There's a lot of smart people in the chat room over there. I'll try to explain as much as I can. Don't be scared. Don't fret. Uh, there's no such thing as a dumb question on my channel. Y'all know that, man. Next task was, so we did the IPv4 static routes to the internal land. Now we got to do some floating static routes to the internal land. So now we got to create some backup routes. So first, we did a static route going this way to local area network number one. And we got a floating static, I mean, a, a regular static route going to local area network number two. So now we got to create a, another backup route in case our ex-girlfriend come over here and chop up this cable over here. So now we're going to send traffic and going to see that that line is down. It got to go this way to local area network number one. And another backup route to local area network number two is going to go that way like that to local area network number two. So uh, we'll go to ISP1. And we're going to say IP route to get to the 192.168.10.16. Subnet mask of 255.255.245.240. Take the next hop of not dot two, but dot six. No, my bad. Uh, we got to go to ISP at two to do that, right? Let me make sure. I think I let me. I read that wrong. No, on ISP one. That's that's interesting. Yeah, on ISP one through the ISP two network. So my bad. So the next hop is actually this right over here. That interface right over there is going to be the next hop. So I'll show y'all real quick. So from the server, he sends his traffic this way. And we see that the, our ex-girlfriend chopped up this cable right here. We need to send our traffic going this way. So that means that'll be the next hop. What is that interface right there? ISP2's gig interface, which is, we'll show up with that pop-up window. Bloop. 192, what is it? It just showed up. 192, or 198.00.2. Y'all see it right there? Gig 00 interface. On the bottom left, I don't want to move the mouse so y'all can see it right there. Right over here. Uh, 198.0.0.2. But you could also pull it up on the address guide that is showing up over here. Right? It is ISP2's gig 0, 0 interface. 198.0.0.2. Right? See that? So we go back over here and we'll say take the next hop of 198.0.0.2. He said he's good. Okay, appreciate that. I'm glad... Uh, you understand it so far? Shout out to Anders Tech for being interactive over here. He, he not shy at all, right? Press enter, and then we'll see we are at, still at 37% complete. So we did something wrong. I don't think we was at 37%, right? Let's say, let's see. Uh, oh, you know why? Because we had to create a floating static route. So that's what it is. Uh, we had to change the administrative distance. So let me get rid of that. Bloop. It's stupid. 
and glad thing good, good thing we had that uh that feature right there right in the real world you're not gonna have no grading feature the shit just ain't gonna work and then your boss is gonna be like why the fuck this shit ain't working right so we get rid of that go control e to end and put five as the administrative distance right because that's what they asked us to do didn't they and i didn't pay attention yes i even highlighted it right there use an administrative distance of five right press enter bloop, and now we're at 43 percent complete so that's what i was missing there right we got to do the same thing so what we did there uh, and just in case anybody's not understanding we said we're sending our battle our primary traffic was like this to local area network number one like that right now that our ex-girlfriend chopped up this cable over here at the top we're going to send our backup route bloop, this way to local area network number one we got to do the same thing for local area network number two create a backup route basically so and then this will be the next hop same thing right press enter does anybody understand that or don't understand it let me know uh the next hop uh we say ip routes to get to the network of 192.168.11 oops 11.32 subnet mask of 255.55.55. dot oops i didn't do that right 55.55.255.224 uh take the next hop of same thing 198.0.0.2 but also give an administrative distance of five because it's gonna be a backup route Bloop. right press enter and we'll see we are at we was at 43 percent now we're at 50 percent complete all right so we halfway done y'all we halfway done y'all i know y'all just like <laughs> no god <laughs> no god please no no we halfway done y'all we halfway done uh hi y'all we got ab osman in the building appreciate you for tuning in uh we're just doing a ipv4 and ipv6 Static Route Lab. There's a link in the on the top of the chat over there. It'll take you to the Discord server, and you can download this lab and do it along with us. But we're halfway through, as you can see. We're 50% complete. So you may have to either rewind this stream and then do it along, uh, do it by yourself, or just try to catch up while I'm while I'm talking y'all ear off, right? So uh, part four: configure IPv6 floating uh, static and floating routes to the internal lands. So now we got to do the same thing. Uh, except we're doing it with IPv6, which I y'all know me. No, God. I hate IPv6 because these long ass addresses, right? So now we got to create a uh, we say floating static route, yeah, static. So now we got to create a floating static, I mean, a static route this way, but for IPv6 to local area network number one, we got to do another one to local area network number two. Then we got to do a backup one, which is probably going to go to the bottom route, right? The spectrum uh, ISP. Uh, it's gonna go this way and you see that the, our girlfriend chopped up that cable It's gonna take his traffic going this way to area uh, local area network number one and then the other one for the, the backup route uh, For local area network number two is gonna go the same way Go to ISP one see that that network cable is chopped up go to ISP two and then to local area net network number two Right, so same thing, but just for IBB six, right? Uh, let's go to ISP one and say do we got to do that on SP1? I believe we got to do that on SP1. I believe we do. Yes, we do. Uh, on ISP1, configure a next hop of one uh, IPv6. So I'm throwing static route to the local area network number one. How we do that? IPv6 routes to get to the network of this right here. I'll even copy and paste it because I hate typing uh, these long ass addresses. To get to that network right over here. Oh, that's dot 10. That's the, yeah, that's the network address, right? To get to this network, uh, take the next hop of this guy right over here. So it should be whatever this serial interface is. Uh, I believe it's serial, let's see, serial triple zero? Yeah, serial triple zero. So that's the IPv6 address. So we'll say edge router, and we'll look at the addressing guide so we can copy and paste it, right? Uh, edge router zero triple zero IPv6 address. That is the next hop. Bloop. All right, we're at fifty percent, fifty percent complete. Right, we're halfway there, halfway there, y'all. Uh, go over here and say that is your next hop to get to that network. This is your next hop. Oops, I tried to copy and paste it and that didn't work out. So let's let's uh let's do this. Damn, hold on. Let me, I'm gonna have to handwrite that because I don't know why I didn't like the pace. 2001 uh, colon, and let, don't let me make, don't let me, let me fat finger this, y'all. DB8 colon A colon 
one colon colon two we don't need to set that now so i don't think press enter and now we're at 56 percent complete so we almost there y'all so we now we have a primary route from the server to isp1 to the edge router to local area network number one that's ipv6 that's the primary route now they said to create a where were we at uh, another one for local area network number two right and i'll even copy and paste that this is the network address bloop because i don't want to mess that up uh you know shame in my game put that right over there ip number one and we say same thing ipv6 routes to get to the network of bloop this take the next hop of same thing same next hop it's pretty much the same next hop 2001 colon d b8 colon a colon one colon colon two as you can see why i hate bloop, press enter we're at 62 percent complete uh so now we have a uh, primary route via I, uh ibv6 going this way to local area network number one we got another one for local area network number two so now our girlfriend's gonna our girlfriend's gonna come over here and chop up this cable again. Now we have to have some backup routes to go this way to one and local area network number two, right? And y'all can see, man, I'll be having relationship problems. <laughs> uh, it's damn, it is what it is, man. Uh, now let's go to uh, what did they say? They said we'll follow along for now. Thanks. All right, appreciate that, man. Uh, uh, yeah, shout out to Ab for that one. Now we not we got to create floating static routes. So same thing, but we're gonna do floating static routes. The backup default routes with the administrative distance of five, right? So on ISP one, do same thing. Floating static route. We're gonna say IPv6 routes to get to the network of uh, that first one, which is DB8. This one. This is the first network to local area network number one. Bloop. We'll copy and paste that. Paste. Uh, instead of taking this as your next hop, take, we're going to say, instead of taking this as your next hop, take this as your next hop down here because this link is going to be down. And just in case, this is just, just in case route. And that's the reason why I think they call, I've said this many times, I think they call it a floating static route because it's like a floaty to, to save you in case you're, you know, you know, in case of emergency. And that's why I think they call it a floating static route. I don't know. Y'all let me know. Put it in the comments over there on why they call it a floating static route, whatever. Uh, so ISP1, we said take the next hop of ISP number two, this right over here. What is that network address? I mean, what is that IP address of this interface right over here? Let's look at the addressing guide and copy and paste that as well because I don't want to fuck that up. <laughs> uh, where is he at? IP ISP2. It is not the serial interface, but the gig interface. So it's probably this one right over here. Twenty-four hours later. Calm down, goddamn. This is these letters are too damn long, and I don't want to type it. These are IP addresses. Uh, that's the crazy thing about IPv6, man. Uh, they're just, you know, it's you're more, it's more pre prone to human error, especially when you have a, a host address that's just long like that. We, let's get rid of that. And I believe that's all we need to do for that one, right? We'll even bring up the grading features just to make sure. Uh, oh, we need to put a floating static route. So change administrative distance, right, to five. Press enter, and we're at 68% complete. So that was correct. Uh, and then we got to do another backup route for the local area network number two, which is that one right there, right? And we'll do, so we can just copy and paste this because we're just changing the networks and the next hops. So we'll say to get to that network, take the next hop of uh what is it this right here with administrative distance of five that's gonna be a backup route all right press press paste let me get put a space there right y'all with me so far anybody, anybody want to see what i'm doing we just i'm just copying and pasting this part right here press five there now we're at 75 percent complete so we're three quarters of the way there let's take a look at our round table so far right so oops so ip routes that's ip route right that's just the IPv4 routes. To do look at the IPv6, we show IPv6, right? Show IPv6 route, and we see the routing table. And then the primary route is these are the two primary routes, right there, right? Uh, once our girlfriend comes over to the data center and chops up that fiber cable over here, we'll send our traffic going the other way, right? If y'all want me to demonstrate that, we can do that, right? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's just uh, 
Let me see. You're not gonna be trapping that. So let's let's just shut that interface down. We'll see what happens, right? You see, right now the administrative distance, that's the primary traffic. It's administrative distance of one. So same thing we did with IBB4, but now for IBB6, right? Let's go ahead and uh chop up this cable right over here, ISP number one, which is a serial, what is it? It's a serial zero zero interface. I don't even know. So IBB six interface brief. Uh it is the looks like it's a yeah, this is a serial zero zero interface. So we go to global config mode, we say interface, oops, interface serial, oops, serial zero zero slash zero. Press enter, shut that bad boy down, bloop, and you see they turn it red right there. Right now we take a look at our routing table, do show IP v6 route, and you see there is the floating static route. That's why it has an administrative distance of five. And that is why it has, remember, the higher the administrative distance, the worse the route is. So it's just a backup route until the other one come back up, right? So we call the cops and we call the ISP uh, and then we tell them to you know, fix this cable or whatever, whatever. And then uh, Ed Girlfriend gets arrested and then we no shut that bad boy, bring that up, take a look at our router table again. And we see the one's, original one's not back up just yet. Not just yet. Y'all see, we're still using the floating static route. Now this interface is up. Y'all see how quick I did it and the, the backup route is still in place there. Now we do show IPv6 route and we have our primary route again again back up administrative distance of one that's what that's what a float how a floating static route can, can work uh anders tech said floating routes can be utilized with one more static route they can be used together with dynamic routing protocols in both cases floating static route act as a backup route yep that's something else we could do too you have multiple floating static routes if you want to so in case that one fails and then the other one fails, like, but if chances of that happen, and that's like, you got to have like multiple ex-girlfriends keying up your car and shit and, and chopping up the cables at the data center, right? So uh, that's his worst case scenario. So we're what, 75% complete? So we're three quarters of a way there. We're going to beat our little hour mark right over there and then we'll just call it a night. Uh, the next step is what else they wanted us to do here. So we created the IBV6 floating static routes. No, that's IBV4. Then we did the IBV. Where they at? Where they at though? That's IBV4. That's IBV4. Then we did the IBV6. Then we did the ones with the floating static routes. If your configuration is completed correctly, you should be able to ping the customer server from the hosts on LAN 1 and LAN 2. So now, uh, what they want us to do basically have these PCs in the corporate network. Uh, ping the server that is over here um, yeah pretty much it so let's go to PC1 get on our knees pray to the network gods and ping the server which is 198.0.0.10 ping 198.0.0.10 pinging wait for it wait for it 12 seconds later it timed out and then we got a reply that's good that's a good sign there got, us, got me nervous there over there right all right, so that's good. We'll just ping it again. We have 25% loss. Now it's pinging. So we're able to ping, right? If y'all want to see, y'all want to see the traffic? How we do that? We just do simulation and we'll see how he gets there. And then we'll just say, have the PC, how we do that? We'll have the PC ping the server and it'll show you how we get there, right? We just fast forward. He sends his traffic going this way, that way to the edge router and to our primary ISP, right? That way. That way it makes it to the server. And then we also create a static routes going back. That's the problem with static routes. So you gotta do it both ways, right? And then it sends the ICMP reply like that, right? Same exact way, right? And I can show y'all what happens when we chop up the cable like we did before, but I'm not gonna do all that. Otherwise we'll be sitting here forever. So we'll go back in real time. And then let's take a look at the next. Uh, in addition, oh, and they said, in addition, if the primary route is down, connectivity between the LAN hosts and the web server should still exist. Y'all wanna see it? Y'all wanna see the backup route in play? I did show y'all, but I didn't show y'all in simulation mode. I'll show you in simulation mode, right? We'll do, we'll do it real quick. Let's delete that last PDU. Uh, let's go to the edge router, right? This time, uh, our, our girlfriend took the CCNA course and then she learned how to hack into the router. And we said interface, uh, what is this right here? Serial triple zero. And this time, instead of using a, a machete, triple zero slash zero we'll shut that bad boy down and now she's actually shutting it down this way right so now that link is down right how does he make it to the server now 
if you send our traffic from PC to the server, we'll fast forward and watch the traffic, right? He goes that way to the edge router. He sees that one is down and he takes the backup route to the server. Uh, fast forward. Oh, did I just crash it? Please don't tell me. Oh, Lord. This is the tricky thing about Packet Tracer. Let's give it some time. Clear the event lists. This is why I want to do this either. All right, let me go back in the real time. But anyways, y'all seen it, right? Let me let me do it one more time. I hope it don't crash this time, though. Well, let's just do it this way. That's the tricky. Oh, I see. It took the backup way and made it to the server, right? And then he, I believe he gave him a... That was an ARP request there. And then coming back, he takes the same way back. He sees he does he, he sees that one is that link is down. Let me fast forward. I push the fast forward button now. And then he makes it come in. Oh Jesus, that's the thing about simulation mode. Let me go ahead and stop doing that. And then y'all see what happens, right? It makes it his way back. Please don't crash on me, man. Don't do me like this, Packet Tracer. Let me go back into real time mode and get out of this, man. Let's unshut that, man. All right, y'all see what happens, man. We were 75%. I don't want it to crash while midstream, right? So let's interface serial, triple zero. It made its way back, y'all. We, we, we seen it early in the stream. No shut. Let's bring that back up. Bring that ass back. All right, y'all seen it work, man. It, it basically makes its way back. It sends it over there and sees that link is down, and it comes back this way as its next hop to the local area network number one. And that's the thing about simulation mode. The buffer gets full, and it starts freezing, and I don't want to crash it, so... Uh, Clifford Anderson in the building. Appreciate the super chat. He said, newly CCNA certified fam. Sending some support for everything you do. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate that, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I had a super chat in a minute, too. So, appreciate it for that. Pre uh, Professor Black Ops in the building said, congrats, Clifford Anderson. Yeah, for sure. Congrats uh, on passing the CCNA. Uh, any donate? Oh, yeah. Thanks for the donation there. Uh, Anders Tech in the building said that, too. Yo, thanks, Evan. I appreciate it. Yeah, so congrats on the CCNA. Somebody else, I forgot who it was, that passed the CCNA. He said he... Uh, that my videos helped them a lot. I need to finish uh, them videos, man. I had a whole bunch of tutorials on my channel. And I think I stopped on like, I don't remember the, I think there's like two, it was like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. And I stopped at like, I don't know, 2.7 or 2.8. And there's like, it goes up to like 6.0. And uh, I just got caught up with a lot of projects at work and I stopped doing the tutorials. And then once I got to like a certain amount of subscribers and I was able to live stream, this is more fun to me because I can interact with you guys. Y'all sending me super chats and shit like that. So it's more fun doing it that way. So if y'all want me to, you know, finish those tutorials, man, just make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to your boy, and then I'll continue with those tutorials, man. But uh, yeah, just live streaming has been more fun to me. So uh, I saw you start it back. Yeah, yeah. What you mean? Start it, start it back. Oh, you're talking about the old videos, the, the tutorials? Uh, you had some good videos. Yeah, man. I, I haven't done those in a while. I need to I need to pick back up on those, man. I, I think I checked it the other day or two. I was like, I haven't updated that playlist in like two years or something. So I, I'll go back and do those, man. Anyway, uh, we're at 70, what is it, 75% complete? Yeah, 75%. So we're three quarters of the way through. Uh, Professor Black Ops, if y'all into the cybersecurity, y'all check out his channel too. He's dope. He got a dope YouTube channel as well. And he does a lot of cyber cybersecurity stuff and usually gives us the stigs of the day. So we're working with static routes and floating static routes, which is probably not really something implemented in stigs. Who knows? You let me know. Uh, take your time. Just when you have the chance. I appreciate the tutorials as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back and do those, man. I'm gonna go back and do those. I've been I've been getting people to DM and me be like, yo, can you continue back with those? I'm like, man, I'm uh, the live streaming has been more fun to me. Because it's more interactive with you guys and you know, y'all let me, you know, it's just more fun doing it, doing the live streams to me. Uh, it takes a lot of preparation with those damn tutorials, man. I, I gotta, I gotta do them. Top PowerPoints. I gotta try to come up with, you know, and just try to make it not boring too. Anyway, uh, configure host routes. What are host routes? So we created uh, static routes to take us to networks, right? Now we're gonna create static routes to take us to particular devices. That's what a host route is. So in this case we're all focusing on this uh customer server let's just create a route i think they're gonna have us do that uh create a route to this specific server right here and that's what the host route is you have a route to one specific uh device right uh back to that it said what he said what he said on his router configure a ib4 directly connected host route to the customer server and that's exactly what i predicted uh so 
we're gonna say let's go to the ISP router my bad the edge router uh zoom in a little bit here go to global config mode and we're gonna say IP route to take me to the server 198.0.0.10 right 198.0.0.10 subnet mask of is probably oh that's what I had to think about too uh, the subnet mask for a host route is all 255s, right? Because you're saying the exact, remember the, the subnet mask, uh, when it's all 255s, you're matching the exact number. There is no network address or host address. It's just one host. So that's why it's all 255s, right? So 255, 255, 255, 255. Take the next hop of what? Same, pretty much same thing. Take the next hop of this to make it there. What's the next hop? It's triple 10 dot, I believe it's dot two or one. What is it? dot one yeah triple ten dot one is the next hop right so we say ten dot ten dot ten dot one press enter uh and we're at 81 percent complete so we're almost there y'all we write it we 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 getting close to the finish line there y'all uh and then the next thing was uh create a floating host route with an administrative distance of five so this time we're pretty much doing a backup route to the server right those other routes we created before were just network addresses now we're doing specific addresses to take us there we're saying ip routes 198.0.0 oops y'all almost made me fat fingered it right there man you stupid dot <laughs> 10 oops dot 10 255 255 255.255 take the next hop of what uh instead of taking triple ten dot one take this is your next hop down here who is that that was triple ten not dot four but i believe it's stuff five oh you can't even see that way uh hmm we'll have to look at the address and guide it is ipv i mean uh isp2's right here isp2's serial interface right so we go to isp2 and the address and guide and it's a serial interface and it's this right address this address right here triple ten dot five that's the next hop right y'all with me so far so ten dot ten dot ten dot five is the next hop but the administrative distance is five press enter we're at 87 percent complete so we almost done we almost done y'all we getting we're getting close to the finish line over there uh what was the next one the next task was uh now we got to do the same thing for i believe let me see all oh, the host routes so we did the uh ipv4 host route now we got to do we did the uh other IPv4 host route, but it's floating. Now we got to do an IPv6. Jesus Christ! No, God! <laughs> an IPv6 host route. So the exact address of the customer server, the exact IP address, the IPv6 address, that one right there. So let me copy and paste that because IPv6 is very prone to human error, right? We're gonna say IPv6 route to take me to the host. This take the next hop of loop this right over there which is uh and i don't want to mess that one up either so let's just go over here enable let's just show ipv6 interface brief take this is the next hop the serial interface which is that right over there that is your next hop Bloop. copy right oh I, I, I don't like typing ipv6 addresses but one they kind of be co confusing sometimes and two you're prone to human error so that's why i'm copying and pasting that one there uh Take that as your next hop. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? We remember how we did uh, the exact host address by doing all 255s for the subnet mask, right? We got to do the same thing, but for IBB6. And the way we do that is slash 128. That tells you that's the exact host address that I want a static route to, right? Press enter. We are at, I hope I did that correctly. <laughs> uh, let's look and we'll see we are at 93 percent complete yep so we're good to go we got one more route to do so we got the floating static route i mean the uh ibv6 static route going this way now we need another one to go in that way ibv6 right go back to the edge router and pretty much copy and paste right to make it to this network right over here that guy not network that host address ibv6 that right take the next hop of not this, but this is your next hop, which is, we can't go in there and check, so we'll just look at the addressing guide and copy and paste that bad boy. Where is he at? Over here. 
IP ISP2's serial interface that right over there copy that bad boy and go back to the edge router y'all with me so far anybody got any questions let me know uh sub your channel yeah man he is pretty dope man he uh does does the you know uh current events like we i talk about the i uh you know you'd have to be at the very beginning of the stream to see me talk about the it industry's current events and stuff we talk about the quick protocol professor black ops if you're still in here have you ever heard of the quick protocol q u i c basically it's a combination of tcp the best you know like the pros uh for the tcp protocol and udp protocol so it's not only is it uh it's connected it's a connection oriented protocol but it also uh but it's also it's it's also reliable uh and it's and it takes and it's it's basically faster so it takes the best of both worlds and it's called quick which stands for quick udp internet connections protocol and my boss told me about it earlier today i thought he was fucking with thought he was fucking around with me he was like you ever heard of the quick protocol and i was like why do i think this is a punchline to a internet joke or something he was like what and, and, and you know english is not a first language i was like like, like a joke you trying to he's like no nah, man i'm serious it's, it's called the quick protocol and he, he found it on the firewall is wondering why we get so much traffic it's basically a protocol that google invented like back in 2012 or something like that and it's and it's and it's and it's much faster it's going to be like the future so it's called the quick protocol q u i c y'all look it up rfc 9000 uh the next hop was i pasted it right press enter oh jesus christ <laughs> Let me, we'll have to type that shit. Fuck it, man. Uh, 2000. Let me do that, man. Hold on. What was it, man? 2000. Jesus. 2001 colon DB8 colon A colon. It's not one, right? It is going to be A2 is your next hop. So A2 uh, colon colon, I believe one. And then the administrative distance of five, press enter. I hope I did that correctly. There must be something out because I hate those IPv6 addresses. And I was correct. So 100% complete. So we're done there. And we can check our results. It already tells us we're complete. Press enter. Uh, and that's what I love about Packet Tracer because of that grading feature. Obsessing features. And we see we're not missing any routes. We'll just uh, triple check our work. We're just by pinging the server. Let's go with from PCB and ping the customer server. Let's ping the IPv6 address this time. Right? I'll copy paste that bad boy go on the pc go to the command prompt uh get on our knees pray to the network gods paste uh enter and there we go we got some replies All I do is win, 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 no what. <laughs> anyway uh i typically stream monday through thursday 8 p.m eastern standard time but lately i've been on this cake to the lab every day and it's usually gonna be sometime between six to nine uh eight uh between 69 uh eastern standard time uh so y'all hit me with that like button hit me with that subscribe button uh join the discord server there's a link at the top of the chat over there and then you can download this live and do it along with us but you know it ain't gonna be live so uh you ain't gonna be able to chat and stuff like that but anyway you can follow along just do it that way or just do it on your own whatever and uh and if you need to reference it you can just go back and watch this video uh he said they had a good talk about quick on there on uh, where? Oh, uh, shout out to Peter Hunt in the building. He said, uh, I never heard of that protocol. Yeah, I never heard of it too, man. My boss told me about it today, and I was like, I thought he was fucking around with me, but apparently it's, uh, it's a protocol that Google came out with in like 2012, and they made it open standard in uh, last year, May of last year, and it stands for uh, Quick UDP Internet Connections, and it basically takes the best of both worlds for TCP and UDP. You know how one got the three-way handshake to make it connection oriented and you don't have to you, you're not you don't have worried about drop traffic or anything like that you, you'll always have a connection you do retransmissions with tcp well this one takes the best of both worlds tcp and udp and it's called quick and it's much faster and it's pretty much the future so uh and this tech 79 said appreciate the lab man appreciate you uh for tuning in man so shout out to you but yeah look it up man it's called quick protocol i i ain't never heard of it man it's been out since like what i guess a decade now and uh, shout out to Google for that, man. They be they just like always on top of the future, man. So anyway, uh, what else I had to say? Yeah, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Network Bro. Uh, comment, like, subscribe. 
Uh, what else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. For now, comment, like, subscribe to the network.